What up, tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash Numot for all your magic card needs. More of this chromatic cube. And this time, we're not going to take the lightning bolt pick one, pack one. Even though that's probably the best card to take. We're going to first pick Omen Path Journey. Because similar to uh, OTJ, I think we're going to try to do some five color nonsense and have a little fun. So... Lo and behold, I'm taking a green card. You love to see it. And now we're going to take one of the best green cards that you can get early on. And that's just one of the mana dorks. Is Pilgrim better than Llanowar Elf? Probably not, but still. There are not many one-drop creatures in this format. Uh, Chromatic Cube is all about doing multi multicolor big things for the most part. And so if you can get some early accelerants, we are also passing an Ornithopter of Paradise. Um, but those early accelerants are super, super good. So, pick one journey, pick two pilgrim. We are going to want to take a decent number of lands, of course, as Omen Path Journey wants minimum five different lands in your deck and generally more. That's not too much of an issue given the way I draft. Let's see, Vivian's quite good. Frost Titan's amazing. I think I've gotten more wins with Frost Titan than basically any other creature in the format just because of the free win value. This is, it has Ward 2, but it's not a keyword Ward 2. So oftentimes you'll see people try to cast a removal spell on this without having two mana left over. Their removal spell gets countered, and then they just concede out of shame. Frost Titan is, I think, one of the best creatures you can get. Let's probably take a land here. I think base green is probably the way you want to... Whoa, I lied. Okay, let's go a little bit unhinged. I'm going to take Zakama, Primal Calamity. Then from there, we're going to start looking for all of the yeah, tasty lands. We're going to do a brew. Don't get me wrong. I, I don't think green is unplayable in this format. I was more tongue-in-cheek um, when I said that. But, I mean, I don't think Journey was the correct first pick. But cube, cube is about what you want to do. You can do anything and have some fun and win some games when you can assemble silly decks that also win when uh, things are the best. Any more rampy ramps? No, probably just going to take a land here. We have a Triome, which doesn't add green, so I think Temple of Mystery is probably a slightly better pickup. I, I will say green duels that enter untapped are probably high priority. Actually, I kind of want to take the Lantern of Revealing here too. But I guess the green land is probably pretty safe. it enters the battlefield if you cast it, untap all lands you control. And if you haven't seen the Zakama draft before, that is one for the ages. Hedge Maze here now. Captain Sisse can tutor for... Uh, Zakama, but I do not believe Captain Sisse to be a good card. This is another tapped green source, though, so not the most ideal. Okay, some more green lands. There's also a Kiora here, which could be okay. So surveil land with two land types versus the crag. I don't want to be running too many tap lands and hurt our curve, so I think I'm going to take the crag there. This will also end up being a really good uh, Field of the Dead deck if we can find that card. Kenrith is kind of amazing. Renan Seven's insane. 
Territorial Kavu is probably not going to be bad here. Archives probably okay. The Ren. Still looking for more fast mana. Any mana dorks? Um, grow Spiral, Joint Exploration type things. Not looking good here. So this is our wheel pack. I mean, I'll take the Sundown Pass because it has a couple of Zakama's colors, but... Ugh. Trying to have fun over here, and they're not giving me the stuff I am looking for. Okay, there's the joint exploration on the wheel. That's good. So three mana for Scry 2 draw card. Then you can put a land on the battlefield from your hand. Bobble for some land ramp is nice. We'll take that. White, black land, probably not. Dream Eater's okay, Dispersal's okay. Looks like we are going to go blue-green at the base. There's a chance I play Captain Sisse. Legendary card, so that does work for Planeswalkers as well. So we have Ren and Seven and Zakama for possible Sisse targets right now. All right, pack two, the Kami War. Now we're going to take the Oracle of Moldiah here, most likely. Not really losing much. I guess Needle Purge Pathway is okay. Very easy Oracle for us. Yeah, this is looking fine. Blue, green, splashing, red, white. I don't actually believe there are too many mana dorks in the format. So they're always going to be very high pickups if we see them. White, green, and a black triome. Captivating Crossroads is also solid. Oh my gosh, the dinosaur uh, legendary. Can't Laza, sun favored. You may discover X where X is that creature's toughness. <laughs> Should we try that? Yeah, what the hell. A little bit of a dino theme there. Uh, that's a scary Elish Norn. We have Shatter Skull Smashing as a free roll. I'm not really interested in Tumblewag. How many dinosaurs are in this cube? Can't be that many. So this is just generally going to be a 5 mana 4-4 four, four that Discover 4s. Not bad, not great. Jetmere's Garden is perfect here. Passing a temple, fight with fire. Yeah, Naya land looks too good. This is already three lands that always enter tapped, though, so I'm not the most comfortable with that, but it is what it is. And there's the hoof. Ugh, are we a hoof deck? Either that or cliff top retreat. All right, I'll take the hoof. Tooth and nail is in the format too, so it'd be a nice way to cheat out some of these fatties. But man, I really need the early game. Our early game right now is severely lacking. Heraldic Banner. I mean, Xenagos is kind of incredible with the fatties, but I don't know if I have that luxury. I, I almost wonder if I take Claim Jumper for a Plains card. So that um, 
does find things like Jetmir's Garden. But this is super awkward because I have a bunch of ways to ramp out faster, so... I'm going to take it, but there is a very good chance that if we claim jump, it's not going to really do anything. I'm going to take the Azusa's many journeys here over like Vani Paul. Again, another way to uh, get some more fast mana. Now this one requires you to have the land already in your hand, right? It's kind of like an explorer in that sense. Um, but that's fine. Blue white land, no. Annie joins up. If a triggered ability of a legendary creature you control triggers. That is actually kind of amazing with Panta, Laza, and the Zakama. Also, it's just a like, fine removal spell. <laughs> uh, I guess I could just be cutting the, the, the blue and playing straight up uh, Naya. Let's take the pathway here for red-white. Yeah, I mean, we have a couple pieces of blue fixing, but they might not be worthwhile. Guess I'll take the buried treasure here just for a little bit of more ramp, even though this card's not great. Okay, Nahiri could be okay here. The minus eight is not bad when we have uh, like Behemoth, right? Remember, Zakama is a cast. Temple of Abandon comes back. I maybe have a little bit short uh, the number of playables I would want to have at this point. This card's not very good for us. Noda? It's humans. That doesn't do anything in our deck. Ah, oh, Tribal Flames isn't bad. Okay, pack three we go, and I'm just going to have to first pick this Paradise Druid. Elish Norn's incredible. Saint Alenda, I think, was really good. No, there's, there's no chance. This is just Paradise Druid over anything. Need that fast mana. In fact, I almost wonder if I should take Bronze Walrus here. I hate this card, but it is another mana dork. Probably right. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's Growth Spiral, but we have Field of the Dead. Also losing out on Essica. I have to take the field here. I think it's just too good with what we have going on. And that means maybe splashing a little bit of blue again to get the extra lands as well may not be the worst. Uh, this is looking a little sketch. I might actually end up splashing that joint ex exploration after all. It's a good pack. Celestis, Explore, Nyssa, all very good. I am a huge fan of Celestis, but again, we actually want land cards in our deck. I wonder if Explore is actually better here, but I suppose the looting is probably worth it. Ooh, there's the big Atali. That's nice. Wow, this is another really good pack for us. I'm going to take the Atali, but... Augur is insane, Solemn's great, Rada's great, Mindstone would be good. Natalia's another dragon for the Pant uh, Laza as well. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a ramp and hope my opponent doesn't interact deck. We have a lot of decent ramp at the early stage of the game, and then we have a lot of top end. I guess the Crater Hope's probably not at its best in this one, but oh, nice, very nice, very nice. And our Loam Speaker, another good mana accelerant for us.
Where's prime time? Or like cultivate. Is Captain Sisse worth running now? Is Zakama, Itali, Pantlaza, Ren, Nahiri? It's kind of cute. Probably more cute than it is good. So I might run 17 lands plus smashing instead of 16 lands plus smashing here. Which means we find it need to find like three more playable cards. Blue, green, red. That looks great. Oh, Rexage is also amazing. Yeah, I think Rexage is a little bit too good interactively. There's the Tooth and Nail. Okay. That's really nice. Tooth and Nail for a Tali and Hoof or something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe one more playable and we'll be good to go. Could just use like a random small burn spell or something. I'm not sure if that's possible to wheel any. Uh, Bobble's only basic land, is that right? Yeah. That's fine, we'll still have plenty of basic lands in the deck. Uh, I don't really care for Dragon Master Outcast, but I guess... In a deck that's ramping with lands that much, maybe? It does require them to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to leave Outcast as a maybe, unless we can find something better in the next few picks as we're coming to the tail end of pack three here. Doubling season. Uh, we're not playing any of these cards. Essica wields. So did Growth Spiral. All right, both of those are good. I'm going to take the... Um, Spiral here, I think. Actually, I guess the Essica could be really nice. Never mind, and that's easier to cast. Rada came back. Good. Maybe Rada over the Splash Joint Exploration now. Since we picked up a lot of Mana Acceleration otherwise. Right, there's some weird bug with the damn cube where it doesn't go to deck building and then you have to go back to build your deck and it's added all of the cards, so it kind of sucks, but... Is what it is. Uh, cut, 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 cut. Out, out. Out, 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 out. Maybe buried treasure is actually just worse than joint. Let's do that. Land in, 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 in. Another bug. It's asking you to make the card, because I don't have the art for it. What you need to do is drag it into your deck. It's super scuffed. You can probably file for a refund if you've um, crafted that card because you couldn't figure out how to add it to your deck otherwise. Like I said, I don't think we need an island here. But I guess the island's good for the Field of the Dead, so it's not going to hurt that bad. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, we need to go at least nine green sources. Two, three, four, five. That's too many white. We can go down to one planes. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight red. Nine red even. In fact, we could go down on another mountain and another four. Like, five forests is slightly awkward with Field of the Dead. 
green is just so much more relevant. All right. Little weird green rampy deck here in the chromatic cube. Nice change of pace. Hopefully it uh, can do well. Let's ramp and cast fat. That's a solid enough looking hand to do so. Awkward double forest feel of the dead hand and Given by the looks of it, I'm probably going to have to go Forest Bobble into Forest Activate Bobble instead, but that's just a lot more efficient. Because if I go Field of the Dead turn one, then I play Bobble and do nothing else turn two, you know? So we'll just go grab a red source here. We really do not want to draw mountains anymore. We have very few of them. Oh, we can try to get some value by Rada first. We didn't though. They have, man, a mirror match. If we hit an untapped land underneath the Pantlaza, we get to cast it next turn. It's kind of kind of sweet. Nice. Oh, God, a second mountain. Brutal. So we're going to lose Tooth and Nail here, but I think that's fine. All right, we'll hit a Paradise Druid. third of five forests sitting on top of our deck. That's too bad. Oh, I'm just one mana short of hoofing next turn, aren't I? Actually, wow. I can go Celestis into the Prismatic Bridge next turn is what I can do. Oh my god, that's funny too. Alright, we hit a plane on top, that's good. Got another land on top. Yeah, Celestis. Into bridge. If they don't deal with the bridge, then it's going to uh, cycle through the rootbound crag on top, which would be a nice bonus. Oh, did not expect Lolith. Envy the strong. Spiders or cards? They're gonna go with spiders. My will cannot be denied. Still have a lot of mana available with the Gigantha. Though it has to be used for the actual colors. Cameo! Okay, that's kind of neat. They can lock something down, or they can uptick and try to draw some cards. That lockdown means I can't kill them. Oh, never mind. We just hit a Tali, which triggers off of Pantlaza. Oh my god. Oh my god. And we're going to get a double trigger with the Annie joint. <laughs> uh, this is actually incredible. We get to discover seven off of this now. Just three damage. Is that lethal? That was all at the beginning of my upkeep, so the Kami War is still going to trigger here. Holy smokes. Uh, two, four, six, seven, eight. And this is lethal. 17 trample damage versus one toughness. My god, that was insane. Prismatic Bridge hit Atali, which triggered the Pant Laza after the Atali triggered. Sheesh. Well, we did it. We did the thing. Can probably just retire the deck right now, because that was 
the entirety of what we were trying to do. I know somebody in uh, one of the YouTube comments the last day or two said, hey, build a dinosaur deck if you can. How's that? <laughs> These are the things we live for in Cube, you know? Uh, yeah, that hand's fine. Need double green for Essica, but we can Rada on turn three. Tribal Flames with one right now, not very good. Opponent's playing my deck, blue red. Got a bobble on top. Four mana pass. No land on top. So what we can do here is we can go bobble. Sack it. Go ahead and grab a second a red source here, a mountain. See if there's a land on top. There's not. Scry the walrus to the bottom. Already chumping with the crab, huh? Double Flames is at any target, right? It's not creature or player or something. Yeah. X damage to any target. So if they play like a Ral or something, we can kill it. There's a land on top. I could just pump the Rada and hit him for a huge amount. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're holding open something like a Dismiss or whatever. Burn down the house. Alright, that's fine. So if I cycle Garden and draw an untapped land, we get to resolve Paradise Druid. Ah, oh, sorry, uh, Atali. <laughs> Damn it. That was our window right there. If we had drawn an untapped land for Atali, we might have just kind of won. Now I think they're going to just keep passing again. I mean, maybe they were passing because they had burned down the house and they were trying to set up, but... My hand's pretty bad now. Okay. Gambit for no extra value, just taking an extra turn. That's actually not a bad thing to, for us to see. Scholar into get a bunch of 1-1s, one I guess. Is also fine. Sure. Alright, so now we will get to resolve, resolve the Atali. Um, it doesn't do anything to tooth and nail and put the Atali and the Hoof on the battlefield. Oh, nice! Good. You're just fuel for the fire. The Celestis. Suppose let's just make him discard a card and lose two life here, instead of hitting him for five with Scholar. That way the Scholar has to attack the um, Angrath.
I guess stealing the scholar though would have forced them to, uh, or rather, they would have been at what twelve, making the behemoth more likely to get him for lethal. Okay, I like that. Tap out for something un. Uh, not very relevant, rather, to the board. I mean, I might just have to play into having them having a counter. Yeah, another time walk's not good. Okay, I mean... It was basically just kill the Angrath, so... Could be worse, of course, but... I'm just gonna take it. Because if I block one of the Devils, then they get to kill the Paradise Druid, and we don't want to do that right now. If I'm dead, I'm dead. They might just have, like, a crackle. Yep, that was gonna kill me anyways, because if we block a devil, it just shoots face. We lost to my own creation. Feels bad, but... That's what I get for not drafting blue-red myself. It was that one turn. If we hit a land for the, um... For the Atali, I think we win that game, but we bricked and we had to play Paradise Druid, and then that's when they started going off, so... Had a window, wasn't there. Alright, on to game three, sitting at one and one. Alright, we have more green sources in the deck than anything else. I'm gonna speculative keep. Ripping a green source off the top would be the dream. We would have the turn two druid and a turn three journey. As such, I don't even think I play out the Shatter Skull Smashing until next turn, if we brick. Come on, green source. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Still hitting the green source next turn would be good. Okay, if I brick on three draw steps, that's pretty bad. The worst part is, my Tribal Flames is only for two here, so I have to let them hit me with the Face Breaker. Yeah. Untapped Forest there, and I think we're doing great. But now, now we're probably super far behind. Yeah, brutal. Sucks so bad, but it is what it is. I want to get ones with land types, and I guess I'll get a scry value. We're so far behind now. Oh, and we hit the Field of the Dead. So I don't even get to Tribal Flames for, uh, three. Oh, so sick. Look at this extreme value they're getting. We're so far behind. I guess the good news is, if they don't take Rex Sage, I can blow up the Cruelty next turn. Alright. 
Puts the battlefield tapped. Kind of have to blow up the Rex or the cruelty though. Gain three life and deny them an extra card seems right. Again, we're just so far behind. They've drawn like five extra cards this game. Oh good! They hit my Nahiri and they hit, what was it, a Railway Brawler? Jeez, la frickin' wheeze, dude. Ah. So... Both these last two games were honestly like so close to just that one turn where I wasn't able to cast the Atali in the previous game, the tapped forest, or the, rather the tapped green source on turn four in this game. Like everything just ended up a little bit... Ah. If it just goes a little bit more our way, I think it's an easy win in both the games, but... Okay, one and two now. Time to rattle off. Time to make a comeback. Don't get to play the Pilgrim on turn one, but that's okay. It's not like... Well, no, it would have been a turn two Celestis. Oh, man. This is what I was talking about. The tapped green sources really, really... Biting us in the butt. Plot? Oh boy. Or Fortel, rather, so that's gonna be Alrun's Epiphany. Or it could be Starnheim Unleashed. That is gonna be a very fast Starnheim Unleashed at this rate. I have no pressure. We have none of our top end. Oh my god. I need to draw Wreck Sage or something. And even if we do... This is so incredibly bad. Oh! I meant to kick that! Oh. Huge deal, I guess. In fact, it turns out I wasn't doing anything with it anyways. Okay, I'm ready for Hurt. The good news is... Oh, I was gonna say, if it was, in fact... Actually, can I win this turn? Two, four, six... Oh my gosh, if this was able to make a zombie, I would have I might I might have actually won. Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten. I can tooth and nail for Atali and Well, hmm. I guess I do this still. Remember, Zakama wouldn't untap. Hoof isn't lethal here, unless... Unless we hit the Atali hitting creatures, I would have four creatures minimum. That would be 4, 8, 13, 14. So I would have to hit another like random hasty creature for that to work. So we're probably supposed to go Atali plus... Ant Laza here and get all the dinosaur triggers. 
play with fire goes face or coal. Again, bottom that. Discover four. A free Nahiri, and then discover seven. Is that right? Oppose me and be reduced to. Oh no, that doesn't work like that. I will cut you down. All right. Well, if they can deal four points of damage, I lose. Oh, those all have Vigilance, too! That's right! Oh my god. So disgusting. My plans must be reforged. Yeah, I guess we're dead. Oh, with a play with fire, I guess only kills what are Oracle. Well, that was brutal. Garbage on top, too. Yeah, we're just dead here, aren't we? We loot into nothing. They have too many blockers and can survive too much. I can't get them because the activation is sorcery speed. So my only way to win this is if they make a huge mistake. They would need to not block the Atali for me to win, and they're reading it, so I'm assuming I'm dead here. How did they see the line? Unbelievable. All right, GG's. Uh, well, friends, we tried to have fun, and I think this deck could have won if we had just, like, slightly better draws, but... Hey, at least game one, we got to do the thing. The Pantlaza plus the Atali. We never got to hard cast Sakama. Oh, man. So gross. So close, so gross. Fun stuff. All right, GG's friends. Now, I will say, what I could have done is instead of the Pant Pantlaza and the Atali, what if I got Pantlaza plus Sakama? Would that have triggered for seven? No. Maybe not. In any case, we'll see you back next time.